I went to an auction and I bid on a real marble topped cabinet. I won and I received a faux marble top cabinet. Who knew? You can't trust descriptions these days. But now I have a faux marble top cabinet, so I'm gonna be flipping a faux marble top cabinet today. So let's get flipping. Let's start by getting everything all clean with some crud cutter followed by a water rinse. This will ensure my piece is clean and free of all oils and dirt before I move on to painting. So I'm just going to go over my piece with this 220 grit sandpaper. I'm just doing it by hand because I, it's not a very big surface and I just want to get it very lightly sanded to prepare it for the paint to stick properly. One of my doors had a wobble and needed some wood glue and clamps to get it all stable once again. I'll have links for all the products that I use today down in the description for you. And after the glue dries, I'm going to be priming my piece. When working with details in corners like these, always remember that less is more and keep your brush light. If you go in with tons of paint, then you're far more likely to get drips. I've mixed up some gray from leftovers that I had from the kitchen island I did a while back and I just added a little more white to lighten it up a bit. I kept the faux marble on top until I got this first coat of paint on just so I could make sure that I still hated the faux marble. And now that I've confirmed that I hate the faux marble, it's really got a lot more brown tones than I was thinking. If I'd painted the piece maybe a green or something, I might have been able to live with the top, but I hate faux marble. It's not even printed well. It's blurry. It's just not good. I don't like it. So I'm going to give it a sand down with my sander. I'm going to start with some 150 grit sandpaper 
and I've never sanded a thing like this before so I'm, I'm just kind of starting a little cautious to see what happens and then I've got this gel stain that I'm going to be putting on the top I'm probably going to paint it this gray first because gel stain when you wipe it back you can see some of what's under it so if I I mean you the more layers you put on, obviously, the less you'll see from underneath. But if I put the same gray underneath and I wipe back and you can see that, it's just going to help the tones all match. So that's what I'm going to try to do. And so yeah, I'm going to go sand this and then we'll get some paint and gel stain on it. And then hopefully I won't despise it anymore. <laughs> gel stain is going to need stirred up before you can use it. Then you wipe or brush it on before wiping some of the excess back off. And might I recommend you wear gloves? I spent longer scrubbing my hands clean than I did applying the stain. When you wipe it back off, you want to keep your strokes as straight and even as you possibly can and wipe with the grain, if there is a grain. In my case, it's wiping the direction I want to give the illusion of a wood grain. So since I used an oil-based gel stain on the top, I needed to wait 24 hours for it to completely dry before I can put my top coat on, which is water-based. You'll want to read the instructions on your particular can to make sure it's the same, but mine it was 8 hours to wait if you were using an oil-based top coat and 24 for water-based. I am using Verithane's water-based polyurethane, so I'm going to be spraying it on today and I've waited the full 24 hours plus a couple to let the gel stain completely dry and do its thing and now it's all ready for my top coat. Alright, I've been able to get pretty much all the coats of poly that I need to on this with my sprayer. I'll probably give it another coat on the top with a foam brush that's easier to wash out than saving out my spraying stuff. But I wanted to just take a moment, I got called out in the comments when I started the channel. I did say that I wanted to keep everybody apprised of the numbers as we sold things and I quickly realized that sometimes I only had half a day between finishing the piece and getting the video out and there was never any time to actually sell a piece before my video came out. So we started the channel at the beginning of May or a couple days before the beginning of May and now we're in mid-July and so far we've sold $2,897 worth of profit. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces that I have not sold yet. Some of this is because I've been on vacation. Some of it's because summer's a tough time to sell furniture. There's a lot of people traveling, a lot of expenses going on on vacations and 4th of July fireworks that there's not a lot of sales in July a lot of times and I've been selling for four years and I know that when it just seems like nothing's selling it's probably the same way for everybody and you just have to wait it out and people will come back and be ready to buy furniture again so I'm not worried about it but I'm also not going to slash my prices out and get just to see the furniture go if I had a really tight space I'd probably have to stop painting or slash my prices but I have enough space to store it for now and that's what I'm doing. So I still have the six drawer dresser, the little um, cute green piece that we did, the teal side tables, those happy colors haven't sold yet, the other side tables, the mid-century modern tables, I thought I'd sold them but again haven't sold them yet the pink dresser from is it the last video <clears throat> the last video it hasn't sold because i haven't even listed that one yet <laughs> so that's my fault the beachy dresser with the wood drawers and top that one hasn't sold yet because i also haven't listed that one so <laughs> again that's my fault and then my desk hasn't sold either and then there's this one, I haven't sold it yet because um, it doesn't even have its hardware on yet. But for the numbers on this piece, I did spend $17 on it because I thought it was real marble. If I knew it wasn't, I probably wouldn't have bought it, but here it is, $17. I probably put $10 in material in, leaving us around $27. So that's what we've got in this piece. So if I sold all the pieces that I have, 
that I have either not listed or not sold yet, that'll be another approximately $870 of profit. So hopefully I'll be able to get ahead of myself eventually and be able to get all the numbers to you in the same video. My husband's been wanting me to do a kind of end of the month wrap up and kind of do it that way, showing what we've done, what we've put into it, what we sold it for in that month. And if that's something you guys think would be a good alternative, let me know in the comments and maybe we can work on something for that for the end of July. All that's really left for this little guy is to put his little knobs back on once it's all dry. And again, probably another coat by hand on the top just to give it that extra protection. I really want my pieces to be very well protected. I want the very best outcome for them. So after that's done, I'll get my pictures taken and I will get it listed with the other dressers that are waiting for me to list. So that's really all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. Oh, oh, I am part of a collaboration it is a $100 challenge. I have $100 to find a piece, flip a piece, all my materials and tools have to be included except for power tools. So my brushes, anything that I put into it and it's sitting over there and I'm excited for you guys to see that. So Saturday's video will be on Sunday. I'm excited to be part of the collaboration. It's gonna be a ton of channels ranging from big channels that I've been watching for a long time to channels like mine who are just getting started. So I'm super excited to be able to share in that collaboration with all the other wonderful artists that are gonna be part of it. So I hope you will look forward to that. No video on Saturday because it'll be coming out on that Sunday. So thank you for joining me today. I hope that you like this little faux marble cabinet a little better now. And I'll see you guys next time, bye.